Hey everyone, my name is Joel, and today we will explore the complex dynamics between two key players in inflammation and wound healing, plasmin and fibrin. So what are they? Let's start with fibrin. When you cut yourself or you injure yourself, you bleed, but eventually the bleeding will stop. This is because of blood clotting. Clotting is a very complex mechanism used by our body to stop the bleeding or hemorrhaging. It involves a variety of key factors including platelets, red blood cells, and the protein fibrin. Fibrin is a fibrous non-globular protein, as you can see in the pictures, and its role is to help assemble this tough structure in combination with activated platelets and red blood cells to plug the injury and form an insoluble clot that will help stop the bleeding. Fibrin also helps the formation of fibrinopeptides, which act as important inflammatory mediators. Well then, how does fibrin relate to inflammation and inflammatory response? Well, fibrin is an important product from the clotting system, one of the plasma enzyme mediator systems that are activated after endothelial damage. There are four plasma enzyme mediator systems that occur when there is a damage to the endothelium. These systems are very complex and involve a variety of factors and signaling cascades. So, when there's endothelial damage, this endothelial damage will trigger the activation of the Hakeman factor, a critical component for the initiation of all of these systems, which would also result in the release of the protein prothrombin from endothelial cells. The activation of the Hagman factor will result on the activation of thrombin by the cleavage of prothrombin. Release thrombin results in the production of insoluble fibrin via the cleavage of its precursor fibrinogen. Fibrin will then go on and help the formation of clots in the damaged area and the formation of fibrinopeptides. It is also interesting to note that the production of thrombin also results in one of the key vascular changes that we see in acute inflammation, which is platelet activation via proteases activated receptors, or PAR. But wait a minute, you also wouldn't want excessive clotting. And thus, plasmin and the fibrinolytic system comes in as a key regulator of the fibrin in our body. Plasmin, in its inactive form plasminogen, is a cymogen. The activation of plasminogen is also triggered by the endothelial cell injury and the Hagman factor. Endothelial injury results in the release of TPA, or tissue plasminogen activator. TPA will then transform plasminogen into plasmin, the active form. Plasmin will then remove the fibrin clots as well as break down fibrin to make fibrin degradation products, which are also strongly chemotactic for neutrophils. What we discuss in this video is a very simplified version of what really is going on. There's a fine balance between these two systems, the clotting pathway and the fibrinolytic pathway, to get the optimum amount of clotting and clotting breakdown during the appropriate times. Imbalances in these two systems could result in detrimental and potentially harmful conditions. You wouldn't want too much clotting or too little clotting. This balance is essential for an effective response and resolution of inflammation as well as to our overall health and well-being. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope it gave you some insight into blood clotting and the complex dynamics between plasmin and fibrin in inflammatory response and wound healing.